Okay, today's lesson is over quadratics. What we're looking for is to solve quadratics. We could do it by the quadratic formula or by factoring. And so let's review by factoring. What I would want you to do is set it equal to zero, so we have to subtract three from both sides. We're left with six x squared plus seven x minus three is equal to zero. And the way that I have taught you is by making a box. So we're gonna make a box right here. We have the six x squared and then the negative three. When we combine these two terms is a seven x. So we're looking to multiply the six and the negative three. That gives you negative 18. And two terms that when we add them together, they'll give you the seven, which would be nine and negative two. Since that um, 18 is negative, that's how we get the negative two as one of the factors. Nine X and negative two X go in the boxes. We're looking for the number um, the greatest common factor, so the thing that they have in common. They both have a, in common a multiple of two and an x. That makes that this has to be three x to get a six x squared, and this one a negative one to get that negative sign on the two x. Then here this would have to be a three to get three times three to be nine x, and negative one times three gives you that negative three. That means that your two factors are 3x minus 1 and 2x plus 3. So this is one of the factors, and then this one's the other one. It said still equal to 0. Once you have the factors out, you set each of them equal to 0. So 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, and solve for x. And then 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. And solve for x. And then negative 3 halves. And we reviewed this last time. If you need help, please let me know. The other method is called the square root method. And what you're looking for is that one side has a squared by itself. That means that we can put the square root symbol to undo that squared. When you write the square root symbol, it has to be plus or minus the square root. In this case, it's 17, and that's equal to x. That means that x is equal to the positive square root of 17, and x is equal to the negative square root of 17. So remember what you're looking for is that x squared or squared is by itself. To undo squared, you do the square root. If you write the square root symbol, that is plus or minus the square root, we had a negative 25 is equal to x now. These are opposite operations, so they undo each other. Don't forget that once you have a negative inside the radical, we have to pull out an i, so it says x plus or minus the square root of 25. And then I make the little indent to tell you that the square root symbol ends right there and that the i is actually outside of the radical. That means that your answers are that x is a positive. Square root of 25 is 5i. And the other one is x is equal to the negative square root of 25 is 5, i. Making it just the complex part of the terms that we saw yesterday. So like I was mentioning, what you're looking for is that you have a squared by itself on one side of the equation, and that's how we can do the square root of both sides to cancel each other out. We have x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus, and that's probably the hardest part for students is to remember that you have to write both terms of the square root of seven. Now we're gonna add two to both sides. We have x is equal to two plus or minus the square root of seven. Making your two answers, x is equal to two plus the square root of seven, 
and x is equal to 2 minus the square root of 7. For the quadratic formula, this will not be given to you on the test, so you got to try to get it memorized. We have to make it equal to 0, the quadratic. So make it equal 0. Just like on factoring, we're going to add 2 to both sides. We have x squared minus 4x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now we have to know the parts. The a is the first term on the formula. So if you'll look back over there, it said ax squared plus bx plus c is supposed to equal to 0. Making a 1, because there's a leading coefficient of 1. b is negative 4 because otherwise that's how we change the sign. And then C is a positive two. We substitute it into our equation. We have X is equal to negative B, which is a negative four, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is negative four squared, minus four is part of the formula. A is one, C is two, all divided by 2a, which is 1. All right, so it said negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. We're just substituting in those values. I realize that some of you could do some of this in your head. You just simplify as you need to. I'm just showing you all the steps. So minus a negative is a positive 4 plus or minus the square root. And when you put all of this in your calculator inside the radical, it ended up being eight divided by two. Make sure that you always simplify radicals. I'm gonna remind you how we did it last time. What we did was the little factors. We had eight and we divided by two, and then four, eight divided by two is four, and then we divide by two again. That gives you two, and two divided by two is one. So you're finished when you get to the one. The pairs are the ones that come out of the radical, and the number by itself still stays inside of the radical symbol, making it four plus or minus two because of these two, and then the square root of two because of this one. And I'm gonna make it like this just so I can have enough space to keep writing. Now you separate the parts, x is equal to four divided by two plus or minus two square root of two divided by two. I'm just separating them so you know that you s divide both parts by two. X is equal to two plus, and then two divided by two is one, so we just write the square root of two. And two, because four divided by two is two, the minus square root of two. And those are your two answers. So let's try that again. What I find easier is to move the 2x squared, so I'm going to subtract that from both sides. And now we're left with 0 is equal to a negative 2x squared minus x minus 4. We're going to substitute in the values. The a is negative 2. The b is negative 1. And then the C is negative 4. For the formula, B minus B, so minus that negative 1. Oh, sorry, it was positive 1. The X was positive, positive 1. 1. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, 1 squared, minus 4. A was negative 2. 
c was negative 4, all divided by 2a, which was negative 2. Now we simplify, that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root. When you put that in your calculator, we should have gotten a negative 31 divided by negative 4. We're always trying to simplify the radical. 31 is not divisible by anything else. It's prime. So that means that we're just pulling out the i. So that means that we have negative 1 divided by negative 4 plus the square root of 31i divided by negative 4. Or the other option, negative 1 divided by negative 4 minus the square root of 31i divided by negative 4. When you simplify your answer, you should get 1 half. Don't forget this changes the sign, so this would be minus the square root of 31i divided by 4. And then this one is 1 fourth, and this becomes positive, plus the square root of 31i divided by 4. Make sure you pause the video anytime you need to. Rewind it to make sure that you understand. All right, the last method that we're looking for for solving quadratics is by completing the square. On this one, we need the leading coefficient to be 1, and we also want to have the x and the x squared on one side. So we want the constant, that's without the x, on the other side. without the x alone. So on this one, we're going to add the 4 to. So x squared minus 4x, and when I'm going to put plus something is equal to 14, because 0 plus 14 is 14, plus something else. And this is what we're going to use to complete the square. How we complete the square, it says you get half, so we're going to divide by 2, the coefficient of x, so that's this term right here, negative 4. And then we're going to square it, so half and squared. Half is negative 2, squared is 4. That means we're going to add 4 to both sides. We did this on purpose, so now we can write it in the form like this, where this is squared. And that's why it's called completing the square, because you actually created a squared binomial. And this is going to be equal to the 18, because 14 plus 4 is equal to 18. So what goes right here? What goes right here is the part inside the parentheses. So negative 4 divided by 2 is the number that goes in here. Since it's negative 2, that's why we write minus 2. If it were to be a positive number, then we put plus. But since it was negative, we're writing minus. The reason that we wanted it to set it up this way is because now we're solving by the square root method. So we're going to do the square root of both sides. When we have x minus 2 is equal to, don't forget the plus minus the square root of 18. We're going to add 2 to both sides. And since I ran out of space, I'm just going to go like this. x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 18. Making your two answers 2 plus the square root of 18 and 2 minus the square root of 18. Please don't be scared of uh, fractions. On this one, what we're going to have to do, so don't forget we want the constant by itself. So we already have that. We don't need to worry about that. But the other thing was that we have to have that leading coefficient be 1. So now we have to fix it. What I'm going to do is divide by 3 to everything. That means we have x squared, because those cancel out, plus 2 thirds x. 
And remember, we got to add something to both sides to complete the square to 5 thirds on this one. So plus something over here. We have to take the middle term, half it. So we got two thirds and we have to half it. And I'm going to remind you of the keep change. So instead of division, we're going to multiply and then flip, flip the fraction. So it gives you one half. And then we have to square it. So instead of writing two thirds divided by two, which is a little confusing, I did um, keep change flip. That cancels out to one third. When you square it, it is one ninth. That means that we're going to add one ninth to both sides. And we set this up on purpose so it looks of the form like this. And then we add those two together and you just can put it in your calculator. I got, I'm gonna use this one. Sixteen ninths. And remember the term that goes in here is this one, so when we multiply by two, we got one third. Inside the parentheses is what goes here. Since we got a positive one third, that's why we put plus. Now we do the square root of both sides. X plus one third is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16 divided by the square root of nine. The reason I separated it because we can simplify that fraction, especially since they're perfect squares. And when I'm gonna go ahead and write that, I'm gonna subtract one third of both sides. So we're left with X is equal to negative one third plus, and then this simplifies to four thirds and negative one third minus four-thirds. Then this gives you three-thirds, which is one, and the other one would be a negative five-thirds as your answer.